Hello world, a cybercrime group inspired by Pokemon is claiming to have hacked a database of 70 million AT&T customers and is trying to sell it on the dark web for 1 million US dollars. And a threat actor has been observed sending fake DDoS accusations in a bid to scare website owners into installing malware. That's in today's episode of The Week Web where we break down and dissect cybersecurity related tech news. A cybercrime group going by the name Shiny Hunters is said to be in possession of a database containing the personal information of 70 million AT&T customers, which they are trying to sell for $1 million. Shiny Hunters' mascot is a shiny Umbreon Pokemon. Now, admittedly, it's been a while since my days of Pokemon Diamond, but if I remember correctly, a shiny Pokemon is no different from a normal Pokemon other than being shiny and rare. Cue the Pokemon Masters frantically typing away in the comments telling me how wrong I am. This group focuses on data breaches, and as their name Shiny Hunters suggests, they aim to go after high quality datasets which they collect and sell. In light of their recent escapades, a new report on the group has been written up by Intel 471. Shiny Hunters primarily operates in raid forums, a forum often used by cyber criminals to sell their wares and databases they've pilfered from victims. Shiny Hunters was the group behind the hack of Microsoft's own GitHub account. Remember, Microsoft owns GitHub, they acquired it in 2018, so for Microsoft own account to have been hijacked is a little embarrassing. The group stole 500 gigabytes of data, though this did not appear to include any critical or sensitive information, so instead of selling the trove, they instead made the dump freely available, Robin Hood style. After trawling through their operations, they seem to make the majority of their data dumps freely available, indicating that the databases they exfiltrate usually aren't of a high enough quality to sell. Maybe they aren't so deserving of their shiny accolade after all. Last year, however, they did manage to exfiltrate personal data and login credentials of 91 million users of Tokopedia, which is an Indonesian e-commerce website, though they sold it on the dark web for just $5,000. In the cybercrime world, a $5,000 payday is tiny. As Intel 471 explains, Shiny Hunter's modus operandi is rather simple. They try to obtain legitimate credentials, most likely for a company's cloud services. This is done by sifting through already public password leaks to try and identify useful creds. Alternatively, they'll purchase credentials on dark web marketplaces, then just log in, grab the loot and try to flog it on the interwebs for crypto. In some cases, Shiny Hunters deploys more advanced tactics. Intel 471 describes how in the event of breaching a business's code repo, the group will search a company's GitHub repository source code for vulnerabilities within the code itself. Those vulnerabilities are used in further, more complex third-party or supply chain attacks. This suggests they aren't as low-skilled as they make themselves seem by trawling through password leaks for credentials. As for their current antics, that AT&T database, AT&T says, based on their investigation, the information does not appear to have come from their systems. However, the group is adamant the data is genuine and has made public a small sample of the hacked data. The auction has a starting price of 200,000 US dollars with a buy it now price of 1 million. Brand new, never seen before social engineering tricks are being employed by cyber crooks behind the Bazaloda malware. Intent on encouraging victims to run malicious code on their systems, the cyber criminals have been making false allegations of DDoS attacks in order to scare victims into submission. The plan of attack is simple but clever. A bot built by the miscreants scours the web looking for websites with embedded contact forms, weaponizing them to propagate this phishing campaign. Contact form submissions are received by website owners which read as follows. We are currently experiencing serious network problems and we have detected a DDoS attack on our servers coming from your website. The poor grammar should be a stark red flag, though they proceed to threaten legal actions if the issue is not resolved within a 24-hour period. The poorly written email then links a Google Drive link, which the miscreants claim contains DDoS attack evidence and instructions to fix the issue. It's foreseeable that an email of this kind will worry many a website owner. With little hesitation, I imagine they'd immediately download the quote-unquote evidence to see what the problem was. The downloaded zip contains a file titled evidence.js, which is our next red flag. Far from being evidence, this is in reality an obfuscated JavaScript shell, which upon execution launches PowerShell and downloads the Bazaloda malware. Bazaloda provides initial backdoor access to a target PC and is commonly used to facilitate the installation of further malware, such as a more fully fledged reconnaissance tool like Cobalt Strike. Cobalt Strike is a legitimate pen testing tool which had its source code leaked a while back. Ever since that unfortunate event, it's become the industry standard RAT or remote access tool for cyber crooks. After our miscreants achieve such an infection, they'd likely regroup and figure out how best to proceed based on the type of the organization they had compromised and the privileges of the computer system they had hacked. 
These fake DDoS allegations just go to show how much craftier cyber criminals are getting by the day. Who knows, maybe at some point they might even improve on their grammar. IMO that would probably be the best thing they could do to improve their infection rates. This campaign is a variation of a similar offensive, likely run by the same bad actor, which involves fake DMCA claims. In that case, contact forms are similarly weaponized by a bot to deliver the complaints. But in this case, it purports to be from a photographer, lamenting that some of their images have been used on the victim's website without permission. The email reads, It's illegitimate to use stolen images, and it's so low. Again, a Google Drive link with evidence is supplied, and surprise, surprise, this happens to be our old friend, Mr. JavaScript Shell. Malware traffic analysis has inspected this particular example. The network traffic breakdown shows logs of Google unwittingly delivering the malware. Then, when executed right on queue, the JavaScript shell retrieves Bazaloader, which in turn proceeds to communicate with the hacker-controlled command and control server. A little while later, Cobalt strike traffic is observed. This is where our attackers would evaluate their options in terms of how best to profit of this particular infection. The easiest way to level up your security is by using a password manager. I recently surveyed you guys on Instagram. Make sure to follow me, by the way. I found half of you guys aren't even using one. I mean, come on. Reusing passwords is obviously an awful idea, but even storing passwords in your browser is a massive no-no. It's very common for malware to simply hoover up autofill credentials. Now, this video is sponsored by Roboform. I recently switched to their password manager. Setting up was hassle-free. Importing passwords from Chrome and other browsers was super easy. Then I just downloaded their browser extension and mobile app, which runs on Mac, Windows, Linux, iOS, and Android, and I was done. Cross-platform automatic password syncing, safe in the knowledge that malware can't so easily scoop up your credentials if you're hacked. Greatly enhance your security today for the price of a pizza. If you use the link in the description, you'll get a whole year's access for just $16. That's little more than a dollar a month. And in the unlikely scenario you aren't happy with Roboform for any reason, they have a 30-day money-back guarantee. Roboform, linked in the description. If you enjoy this kind of video, make sure to help me out by tickling the like button for the YouTube AI, as well as turning on those sub notifications. If you want to see what goes on behind the scenes and follow my journey in creating products for my pen tester hardware company, Maltronics, make sure to follow me on the Instagrams. I am at Jonty. I will, of course, link it in the description. If you're looking for something to watch next, go check out my previous video on how vulnerabilities found in Apple's iMessage are being exploited by the infamous spyware Pegasus to target the mobile phones of activists. As always, sources will be linked in the video description. Stay tuned for more hacking videos and have a good one.